Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. My name is Srivatsa Yogendra. Here is a brief introduction for the system management bus. It is a part of my graduate student project in the, uh, for the course of microprocessor system design in Portland State University. The contents of my presentation are going to be the introduction, a brief about the I2C protocol, a system bus topology, the data transfers on the SM bus, the USAFE model, the addresses, the commands, and the packet error checking. The SM bus was first is a uh, various is a two-wire interface through which various system components chips can communicate with each other and the rest of the system. It provides a control for the system bus to pass command and uh, communicate with the devices instead of individual control lines. It was first designed and proposed by the Intel in 1955 to communicate with the charger and the system host or the other power related components in the system. It was developed to enable an inexpensive yet powerful method for controlling and getting information from the devices. Uh, it's a simple two wire bus, hence it reduces the pin count and is very cost effective. It is derived from the I2C protocol. The I2C protocol, the I2C or the I2C protocol translates into inter-IC. It was first invented by the Philips Semiconductor. It is typically used for attaching low power, low signal power ICs to the processors and microcontrollers. The I2C design reference has a master slave, master single, multi master, multi slave, single ended serial computer bus. It has a 7 bit or a 10 bit address space. The common I2C buses communication takes place at 100 kilobits per second or at 10 kilobits per second in low speed mode. It uses two bidirectional lines, the serial data line and the serial clock line, which are held up with pull-up resistors. There are two nodes in the I2C protocol, the master node and the slave node. The master node generates the clock and initiates the communication between the slaves. The slave node receives the clock and responds whenever the, it is addressed by the master. The SM bus topology. The SM bus devices in a system may be powered by a system bus VDD or by another power source as shown in the figure. It is generally known that as with the I2C devices connected on the bus, the SM bus clock and data lines must have an open drain and open collector in order to perform the wired AND functions. Care should be taken uh, in the design such that the connected SM bus devices do not perform a uh, ground, ground leakage when the devices are turned off. The SM bus usage model. The SM bus specification refers to three types of devices, the host, the master and the slave. The host is a specialized master that provides main interface to the system CPU. The master is a device that issues the commands, generates the clock and terminates the transfer. The slave is a device that receives or responds to a command. The data transfers on the SM bus. The data transfers on the SM bus happens as shown in the figure. The At first, uh, the data is read at, in the positive edge of the clock cycle and is ignored at the negative edge of the clock cycle. The data changes takes place in the negative edge of the clock cycle. The SM bus uses fixed voltage levels to define logic 0 and logic 1 on the bus. The SM bus also uses a acknowledge signal to indicate the completion of the data transfer between the devices. The bit transfer. As I as mentioned earlier, the data is read up at the positive edge of the clock cycle and the data change happens at the negative edge of the clock cycle, which can be seen in the data validity uh, figure. The start and stop conditions for transfer. Whenever the SMB clock is high the, uh, and the data line goes low, uh, takes a transition from low high to low, it indicates that it is a start of the communication between the device. And whenever the SMB clock is high and the data tra transfer takes place from low to high, it indicates that it is a stop condition, as shown in the figure. The SMB uh, SM bus addresses. The slave uh, components connected on the SM bus are are addressed from the master through 8 bits. The last bit is a read or write bit which indicates uh, the read or write operation for the device. The other 7 bits are assigned dynamically uh, after the SMS version 1.1. Whenever a device sees its address, it wakes up and responds to the, last, to the rest of the command. 
A process called the SMBus address resolution protocol is used uses the address when two devices have been assigned a same slave address. The ARP process kicks in and the slave address conflict is resolved by dynamically assigning a new unique address to the SMBa device slave device. These are the uh, the uh, the table indicates some of the pre pre registered um, preset slave addresses which will not be assigned to any of the slave devices these are the commands on the smbus the commands the main one of the main commands is the quick command the quick command is usually sent between the master and the slave the uh, quick command tells the master with the read or write byte read or write bit in the command to either start reading from the reading the data or writing the data the send byte the send byte is used to communicate is also communicated between the master and the slave the send byte indicates whether uh, with the wr is equal to 1 indicates the device to start reading the data from the bus the receive byte is sent from the slave and the master the in the receive byte the slave addresses return the data byte in the data byte pack, uh, of in the data packets of 8 bytes 8 bits sorry packet error checking the smbus version 1.1 introduced a packet error checking mechanism to improve the communication and reliability and robustness the packet error checking is not implemented in all the smbus devices but whenever a packet error checking has been implemented it must be made sure that the other devices in the system are capable of communicating with the host that do not implement packet error checking packet error checking is implemented by appending a pec code of 8 byte 8 bit length at each end of the message transfer as we can see in the send byte and the receive byte commands there's a pc code of 8 bits attached at the end of the command length the smbus uses the smbus uses a smart battery you is a smart battery system uses an smbus the smart battery system is composed of a smart battery which is used to read its chemistry levels its charge and other systems it uses it usually consists of host a smart charger and a smart battery it is easiest and the most efficient way to implement a battery management system for portable devices such as a laptop a portable computer etc cellular so phones also the motherboard of the computer the motherboard of the computer usually uses the smbus to communicate between the switch and the device it is also used in sm system management mode which communicate uh, communicates by sending the commands between the different devices of the system these are some of the references which i used uh, to read up on the for the presentation thank you